So this is a new basic mechanics overview for Monster Hunter Wilds. Hunters of two weapon states, sheathed and drawn. That's the same as in Wilds, or uh, World. Go up in the sheath, you can move faster, use items. Yeah, yeah. Yep. When your weapon's drawn, the weapon can be used to attack. Yep, of course. Those are all attacks in the in, in world. So that's Mr. Bird. Well, he's not really a bird. He. This area creature can be mounted, providing you with ring strap. Can you fight where you can't fight where you're mounted, right? There's no way, right? That's cool. Can guide you automatically to the target monster of your current quest. So, like, yo, real quick, like, you guys see the map? So the map is showing different levels on it now. Because, like, that's what people come in about in Monster Hunter World, is, like, you wouldn't know where you were at in the map. Yeah, it's like a 3D map. So it's still got the scout flies, too. Ooh. Kill his ass. While mounted, you can cover your health. Oh, so you can heal while you're mounted? Damn, so can you get on a mountain combat? That's nuts. Gather useful. That's crazy that you can loot while you're mounted. That's crazy. You even gain the ability to switch between primary and secondary weapon. I feel like what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the, uh, I'm going to go with the greatsword, and then I'm going to use the bow gun. Uh, I'm going to build into that. I, I think that's a smart thing to do. The slinger stand in front of you. So that this is carrying forward, too? Okay. Unless you do uh, fire various types of ammo you gather in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. The flash pod, yep. Mm. That's cool. That's cool. You know there's going to be some shit that's on, like, the roof of a cave or something like that that you're going to have to use this to pick down. Yeah. That's real cool. That's badass. Hook single all red. That's really nice. That's a nice quality of life. Damn, man. Like, this game's looking pretty fresh. Like, I'm gonna be honest. Like, it looks really good. Like, the graphics, the quality, everything like this. Like, this is really looking like, uh... It's looking like that next game, right? There's two more videos? Wait, really? Wait, what? Holy fuck. God damn, I had no idea. I thought it was just one video. What the fuck? Okay, we're gonna watch Great Sword 1 last. Alright, here we go. Let's watch the second one. Uh, this is focus mode. What's focus mode? Carefully aim your attacks. Directly with the camera's facing? Okay. The hunting attack attacks Tempot's monster might create wounds on the body. Ooh, that was clean. Look at that. Watch this again. I mean, like, obviously it didn't go the same way, right? It shouldn't have... Well, wait, maybe it did. Yeah, no, it did. It did. It was right there. Yeah. Yeah. Focus mode will highlight those wounds. Yeah. So then you hit them there, it does more damage. Right. Yeah, of course. So I guess they're really trying to make uh, Wilds the uh, the Elden Ring, right? They're trying to make this, this is the Elden Ring. Because, like, Dark Souls, like, it was kind of inaccessible in a lot of ways. And it looks like what they're trying to do is, like, add in some of these features for, like, more casual players. For them to understand what's really going on, right? Rather than just fucking, you know, oh, okay, I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, I, I think that's clearly what they're trying to do. This this might be a good idea. I, I think I think it's a good idea. That's nice.
That's cool. Yeah. So basically focus mode is just an easier way for like newer players to understand what's going on and showing the camera reticle probably is the same thing. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Hardcore games being a thing of the past. I don't think it's really about the game. Like I bet you're going to have fights in Monster Hunter Wilds that are harder than Fatalis and all a tray on or anything else. You'll probably have fights that are, that are way harder mechanically and you have to do, but I think that also like for example, I think Melania is harder than pretty much any other boss that, like, from software is made, maybe outside of, like, maybe one or two in Sekiro. Uh, but the game also is, like, easier to access. And, and, like, that's really the, that's the hard thing to do, right, with games, is, like, how do you make a game that has a lower barrier to entry, but also has that really high ceiling? I think Elden Ring clearly met that. Like, look at something like, what's the difference between Godric, right, or, like, a base Crucible Knight and uh, Mesmer? That's insane. Build up the build up needs to be for new players. Yeah, yeah. You've got to have the new players in there. So they got one more. This is the great sword one. This is the most important. It's not about casual players. It's about removing accessibility barriers that are annoying and counterintuitive. That's another thing too. Like Monster Hunter does have a lot of things that are annoying. Like I, I complained a lot about like for example the menus, right? The menus were awful in Monster Hunter World. I hate them. And so it's like, if you just had better menus, like, there's no, there's no loss. Like, making a game easier to understand isn't making a game easier. And I think in a way it is, but it's, it's a good thing. Like, a, a game's difficulty should not be factored into, like, how hard it is to be able to understand what the fuck you're supposed to do. Games should be intuitive. Mighty weapon with slower movements and attacks. Yep, that's right. That's what it's all about. Hit and run. Yep. Mm. That's what it's about. There we go. Oh, it's showing, look at his leg. It's showing the same thing. Oh, nah, this is looking really good. It looks so satisfying. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, Capcom made, uh, it, they, they went and made Dragon's Dogma 2, and the combat in Dragon's Dogma 2 was great. I feel like the main criticism for Dragon's Dogma 2 is that there wasn't enough of it. Like, there wasn't enough stuff to do. Like, it's the game, like, the game had, like, such an incredible foundation, and it was just like, man, like, what the, like... I want to do more with this. I want to, like, go farther. Like, what am I going to do? Like, kill another Minotaur that, well, like, three hits? Like, who cares? It was short. Yeah, exactly. And so what I'm really hoping is that this game, like, when I go back and I think about Monster Hunter Wilds, like, if I look at, or World, I keep saying Wilds, but it's World. Um, I have 172 hours played on Monster Hunter World, and I haven't beat all the content. That's fucking insane. That is crazy. And that's on one weapon. I only did Greatsword. That's the only weapon I ever played. You got Rise to? No, I'm just saying in general, right? How open world will work out? Well, I mean, Monster Hunter World is pretty open world. Like, it, it, it kind of... I, I think it's kind of open world. Like, there's a lot of games that are, like, in between open world and not. And, like, basically, you go into different biomes. And, like, so... So, in, in Monster Hunter War, uh, Wild... I bet you're still probably going to go from different biome to different biome, but it's just there's not going to be a loading screen. You know, you're not going to have to go back to camp to do it. Like, I, I don't really think that's a big difference. Monster Hunter's playable content can last for a decade. The PSP version lasted me for five years. Yeah, no, I mean, like, that's insane. So, like, this game is going to be, I would assume, way bigger in scope than Dragon's Dogma. Because, like, Dragon's Dogma 1, even before the DLC, was a pretty short game. Like, it, it was. Like, there wasn't really a lot to the game. Uh, it's apparently the DLC that really brought the meat out into it, right? And then, uh, way bigger, yeah. And, and, like, look at Iceborne, right? What they did with Iceborne. Iceborne, like, people say, like, Elden Ring DLC is big, but they compare that to, like, Witcher 3, The Blood and Wine, and then the other one they compare it to is Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Like, those expansions were fucking insane. And also, they updated the game regularly after that. And Monster Hunter also is a much bigger IP with a bigger fan base than Dragon's Dogma. 
So I could easily see uh, this game coming out and uh, having, like, I, I think it's going to sell more than any Monster Hunter game ever has. I do. I, I think they they probably definitely looked at, like, what happened with, like, Elden Ring and how making the game, like, making, like, that magnum opus level game that makes it more accessible for new players but still retains the complexity for better players that, like, Elden Ring, I think, does incredibly well. I think that they're trying to do that with Wilds. Because, like, if, if I were them, that's what I'd be trying to do. I'll tell you that. I, 100 fucking percent. I'd see what from software would be. Right, hey, yo, oh, look at that. Right, exactly. Coming day one, release stability issues. Yeah, no, I mean, but World has release stability issues, too. Right? I remember when it came out. It was, like, during Legion, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you know, like, it, it had all kinds of problems. So I, I fully expect that there's probably going to be something that you can spend money for in the game that's going to come out. It's like a package that, like, gives you, like, some small advantage whenever you first start playing the game. Uh, that's probably what's going to happen, the same as they did with Dragon's Dogma 2 and the Fairy Stones and, like, Port Crystals. But I, I don't really think it's going to play, like, a big role. Like, it's not like the game's going to be pay to win or something. But, uh, yeah, I think that there's going to be, like, there's a big resurgence, or there's a big, uh, like, ga games are, a lot of games that are coming out are, like, mmo light games. And so what I want to give you an example of is, like, obviously Monster Hunter World, it's not really an MMO, but there's, like, public lobbies and public synchronous gameplay that you can opt into if you choose to. So, like, you've got this game is popping off. Uh, let, let's, let's get some other ones, too, as well. Uh, like, Grand Blue Fantasy, also kind of the same thing, right? Like, it's pretty much like Monster Hunter for even bigger weebs. Uh, First Descendant, you can play solo or you can play with a group. Uh, you had Dragon's Dogma 2, you can kind of play with other... I mean, actually, can you play with... No, no, you can't. You can't. That's for something else. Never mind. That was only in the DLC for Dragon's Dogma 1. And then you also have Once Human, right? So a lot of these games are, uh, a, a lot of these games are kind of like trying to fit inside of like that middle ground of where is it to be, how much MMO, how much like single player game are we trying to make? And I think that like you're seeing a, like the super like traditional MMOs, like for example, Lost Ark, um, like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, uh, and, and like newer ones like Throne and Liberty, for example, or Arc Age 2 is probably going to be like this as well those games are going to, I think, lose popularity. Because I feel like MMO has... There are so many restrictions that people put on the idea of an MMO that it's become constraining to develop one. MMOs are dying. Well, they're not dying, they're changing. And, like, old-school MMOs are dying in the same way that they did with, um, uh, with WoW, right? I mean, before World of Warcraft, MMOs were a completely different thing. And WoW changed the space a lot. So I think the same thing's going to happen again. I wonder if that's impacted Riot. I'd be amazed if it wasn't. The guys over there, they're not stupid, man. They're not stupid. So yeah, MMOs are not even 10% of their potential. They're not, but like the community want, like for example, people don't want solo content in MMOs. But solo content is, I think, one of the big reasons why things like RuneScape is super popular. And I think that's why Lost Ark did solo raids. And look at how popular the Mage Tower was. So, like, solo content in MMOs is really important. And if you understand the psychology of players, you can understand why that is. Final Fantasy's are always willing to collab and change? Yeah, yeah, for sure. MMO audience, MMOs are audience captured and warped by WoW too much to innovate? I feel like you're seeing MMOs innovating now, but they're still focusing on, I think, antiquated ideas. Nobody really knows what the next big MMO is supposed to look like yet. Like, that's straight up. Like, no, nobody has any idea. But I feel like games, uh, that's why a lot of games are exploring this middle ground. And that's what I was talking about, right? First Descendant, Monster Hunter, Once Human, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. All of these games are experiencing, or sorry, they're, uh, they're exploring this in-between. GTA 6? Yeah, I think GTA 6 is going to be a lot like that too. But yeah, this shit looks fucking amazing, man. I love it.